Hey, I'm Kirk with T-Transfer Warehouse and welcome to Beyond the Rolls. I'm a co-host Kevin here and Beyond the Rolls, we're going to talk to in depth uh, about the industry. We plan on having vendors visit and our customers to learn how they got in business or also industry trends. We are super happy to here have uh, Jason Murphy from Samar. Samar is a clothing supplier and manufacturer and we're going to dig deep into what's the trends going on for 2020 and beyond in the clothing industry and how that fits well with your heat press business. So you've been out here today with us and uh, hanging around, we've been shooting some videos, having some fun, and really just kind of like, let's talk about what's what's going on with garments, what's going on oh, with, with Sam Martin, yeah. and what, what can we learn today? Well, so, uh, first off, thank you. I, I'm honored to be the first uh, of the new the new series. Know, and, new Moro Uno. It's, yeah, I yeah, mean, we're, we're excited to be here. <laughs> this is this super cool. It, and it's, it's fun just hanging out with you guys. You know, it's, it's like, so my job at Sandmar is I, I work with affiliates like yourself and people who manufacture and supply the industry so I can get people to understand what's new, what's coming. I work with our fabrics. So I can, you know, I can bring it to you and say, here's, here's what's new. What do you got that's going to fix this problem for me? And vice versa. So that's been fantastic. But boy, what's new is Sandmar. Uh, gosh, this last year we, we launched uh, Carhartt. We launched uh, Champion at the beginning of this year. North Face the Love year champion. before, mm -hmm. and and just our brands are getting stronger and bigger, and it's just a lot of fun. We, we've had nothing but great stuff. Uh, we're expanding our new airline. Uh, this last year, we brought in our first like true on sports bags, which was phenomenal. Bat bags and, and baseball and football and basketball bags. Just it, it was just a fun year all the way around. I mean, look at. Look at you and me. We yeah, tie-dye, right? We got some new stuff. We got <laughs> this. This is brand new on the, on the website, I believe. Yep, that is our yeah. Port Authority tie-dye. And uh, tie-dye is hot. And, and it's not just the traditional tie-dye. It's the crystal tie-dye like you're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, I actually got a chance to visit our factory where we do the tie-dye product. And if you've never seen how they tie-dye something, and they literally talk about tying and dyeing, it is no kidding. It is old school Grateful Dead kind of tie dye. They yeah. still do it the same way. So same huh. way, like we like we bought the tie dye kit, went down to your basement, did it with the washer and dryer, yep. and then mom or dad would be upset because you were kind of like maybe <laughs> you ruined, ruined everything, <laughs> ruined the washer, or maybe the dryer, stuff right? Like that or you threw it in with some other stuff and then it came out covered. So mm -hmm. literally that way. Yeah, it is truly like that. But so, it was so cool to see. But you're cool. gonna see that stuff everywhere. You see it in sports. You see it in retail. You see it in athleisure. I mean, tie dye is hot right now. Mm -hmm. uh, cheer and all that. So it's it, coming back. It's coming back. We're, we're back. We're tied up. Well, yeah. Look, yeah. look at me. We're back. Yeah. On yeah. trend. I think it's good. <laughs> we're <For> trendy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like four people tell me I look good in this today, so I don't know. Four? Yeah. That's fantastic. I know, yeah. So, it's more than yeah, That's a good solid start. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You it's look good, good in that today. Oh, so thank you. Five. Thank you. Five there. Yes. Yep. There's five for you. Yeah. So. <laughs> call, call in. I want to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> so, gosh, um, I'd say, you know, some of the other new stuff, though, that we're seeing, you know, in the industry, uh, di digital camo. Digital camo is coming back super hot um, in, in our sport tech line as well as in our headwear. And I actually brought a piece. Ooh. And it's for you. It's your size. It's my size. That's really It's nice. a schmedium. It's a medium. Yeah, I don't know. It's good. Might, Kevin, you, I'm a medium. a medium. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm like awkward sizes right now. <laughs> getting that dad bod going on. I might be a little tight with that medium, but uh, yeah, it's a I, could, I could probably wrap it. Okay. So You're good. maybe, but I think Kevin will probably be better than it. Yeah, just, all right. just saying. Whoever wants it, it's so, all good. Yeah, it I mean, even has your logo on it. Give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, we so press pressing. friendly. Yeah, yeah. Now, nice. cool thing is is the product you guys put on that. Uh, that was your poly printables mm -hmm. and your turbo, right? The turbo. Correct. Turbo. It's a uh, forty thirty six. Forty thirty six. There you go. Mm -hmm. That product will block the dye migration. Which that's great because that particular product has a sublimated pattern, and you want to use something low temp and that can block that migration from coming through. Okay. Uh, really impressed with how well that worked. So you dyed it low. I mean, it's we pressed it low temp. You just did yeah. it today. Yeah, Dad, we just did it a little bit, a bit ago on a video, and I think that one went on at three hundred for five seconds. Three hundred for five seconds. I mean, it's it's that's great. And that yeah. totally opened up a whole bunch of new doors. Oh yeah, yeah, and and I think <laughs> most of your manufacturers uh, that you guys, you know, and especially on set, you have an option. You know, and almost everything to be able to do these things. Um, I do know our long sleeve version of that has um, a cationic front or, or um, positive charge. So you don't have to worry about it. It's just the sleeves. Uh, but at, on that one there, you do want to be careful. You make sure you you work with that. Beautiful looking garment. I like yeah. it. Thank you. I, these are quality. Medium are going with you. I yeah. don't, I'm not quite ready to flex it. Yeah. Put it in there. Yeah. I, mean, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Do you want me to put it on? Should I put it on? Well, maybe later. Okay. Maybe, All right. maybe later. Maybe later. So maybe well, maybe so when we'll you go home. We'll snap you a photo later. Maybe when you go home. Yeah, you who's going to yeah. put this one on, though? I, I want to see who's going to put this one on. I got it. 
So trending again, what we're seeing is mesh products. Mesh. Okay. Right? Ooh. Mesh is coming back. It's coming back as full-on pieces. It's coming back as accents and uh, color blocks. Um, so mesh is something else that we're seeing a lot in the marketplace. That is a true sh medium schmall. So, oh, yeah. It's got a little cut-up. I'll show a little mud riff on here. might be up your, your alley yeah. there. Too, <laughs> with, uh, what you can do with these garments. Again, yeah. you know, you see what's coming back. It's kind of like, is it really the, is it the 20-year kind of thing where all of a sudden... Let's go yeah, by 20 years, years, and we're going to go back and reach into there, grab those, and say, right. all right, we're bringing them back. I mean, that is mm -hmm. total 70s right there. Oh, and, yeah. And coming back strong. And you're seeing it where, you know, for the athleisure side, it is the ladies are wearing that as a cover-up over, over what they wear under, like their sports bras and such. Mm -hmm. And it gives them, you know, that comfortable and the breathing, and they can get out and do their workouts. Mm -hmm. And it's fashionable. You know, it works really see today. Yeah. They got to take that one home for the wife. I could, yeah, I could wear this at work. Sacrifice? Well, <laughs> <laughs> would that be regulation? <laughs> no, I can't say. Wouldn't be safe in the warehouse. So tell me, Jason, a little bit about yourself. Navy guy. I am. So American hero. Mm -hmm. Joined when? Gosh, I joined in 1991, uh, right as the Gulf War broke out. And uh, I, was, I was in the Navy. I was in Airedale, so I worked on F-18s. But I'll be the first one to tell you, out of the entire time I spent in the Navy, I spent maybe three weeks on a ship. Three weeks on a ship. Yep. The Navy stuck me in the middle of the desert in Lemoore, California, where I worked in an air-conditioned shop, <laughs> and I fixed electronics. Wow. So not what you typically think of when you think of the Navy. And stuff. Not at all. So. Where, where my dad's you know, ex-Navy and was in every ocean you could think of, and my grandfather and my great grandfather yeah, they were all part of it. And yeah, I got stuck in the middle of the desert. What an amazing opportunity, you know, being yeah. able to work on the aircraft. And, mm -hmm. and that's honestly where I got my love of uh, technology as a whole. And how I got into this industry was just having, I really liked tech. And I, and I was uh, at IBM for a short time and decided I was done with the big corporate America so kind of did, thing. So you did big corporate. Yep. Didn't. Didn't, didn't like, like it. it. Wasn't my thing. I, I bet you they wouldn't let you wear mesh. No, was that no the mesh. problem? Was that the game breaker? I it was it. I couldn't get <laughs> it. I had this mesh tank top, and I wore it with my <laughs> suit jacket, and they were like, "No." And I said, "But I'll put on a tie," and they still said no. So yeah, uh, but I ended up going to an interview uh, for an embroidery machine company, and and I remember going there, and I'm looking at the sign, going, "Embroidery? What am I doing?" You know, I'm thinking like these little tiny home machines, yeah. and I walk in, and the first thing I see is a 15 head ZSK. And is cranking out hats, and I was a hat guy, and I'm like, oh, I have to know how this works, and I took the job on the spot. Speaking awesome. of hats, speaking of hats, you're a hat guy. I am. So did you bring any hats? With I this did. I brought one for you hat. specifically. Specifically, you did. <laughs> so this is our new era, an E800 bucket hat. Damn. All right. So the bucket hats are coming back. Yeah, they're coming right back. Now. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're 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 something else. What do you mm -hmm. think? Is it me? I think it's great. I man. like it. I it's can, it's, it's this functional. It looks yep. good. Breathable. Looks Breathable. like it. It looks yeah. fantastic. I think I'm ready for summer. I think you are. So. Yeah. Although it's only January, but we're ready for summer. So. I, I don't blame you guys. You should <laughs> be like ready it. for summer. So the next one I brought is a sublimated pattern on the trucker hats. So this is our uh, C950. So this one here is we have, uh, I think, six or seven different scenes from beach scenes to palm trees to this one has mountains on it. Uh, we did put a big logo so it did kind of cover up a lot of it. Uh, with the trees and the mountains, it's really hot in retail. You're going to see all so, these things. Again, 4036, right? 4036, block the dye migration. Block the dye migration, low temp application. That looks that looks awesome. I think that's more of your style. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So Yeah. You go to a lot of festivals you, throughout the year. You're more, year the, trucker. Right? So, you're more I mean, the trucker type. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, you Don't worry, guys. I got this well, one. So. <laughs> there we go. Still, still not used to wearing a hat, but... I'm a dad now. You, you gotta kind of curve so. that bill. Yeah. That's, you, you know. Yeah, that's not the flat bat. <laughs> that's, that's the flat <laughs> stuff. Yeah. You gotta kind of curve it. You don't keep it, the tag so. on it or whatever. Or we'll get you educated on we'll that. We'll get it. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me wearing a baseball cap sometime this. So, Very nice. So, through the Navy, corporate job. Yep. How'd you get Samar? You, uh, you know, so I, I, I bounced around the industry learning technology, and that was my thing. It's like once I got into this and I saw something else, it was like, I need to know how that works. You know, why is that doing this? Why is it doing that? So I went from embroidery to heat transfer uh, into DTG, lasers, dye sub. I owned my own business for a number of years where we did DTG, dye sub, cutting, uh, embroidery, screen print. And I just kept moving and learning because that's all I want. I just, I, I have to know how things work. So you owned our own business for a while. I did. So entrepreneur. I tried. Tried. It was tough. It was the tough. peak of my investment was 2007 and that wasn't fun. So, so that, that was the one that was yeah. easy for us to, I'm going to go back into the job force. And I ended up at Stalls. 
Okay. And a fantastic company, great products. Uh, you know, I learned a lot, you know, 12 years as a national sales manager and just really got a great education. Um, how I ended up at Sandmar, it, it was just a long time of, of talking and, and uh, getting to know the family and working. I, I was one of their experts uh, that worked on their panel and I would go through with them once a year and we go through their whole catalog. Yeah. Can this be embroidered? Can be a screen printer? Can be dye sub and this and this and this and this. And, and, I, and, I, and I thought, I was like, wow, what a cool company to work for. I mean, their, their values and everything. I'm like, ah, maybe someday. I don't know. Because I was happy. So let's dig into the values of Sandmar. I think I think it's pretty unique because they're big, yeah, and they're mm-hmm. decent sized company. Yep, and they have factories, plants, yes. all over the world. We do. Plus, they have distribution throughout the U.S. Yep, and so we're talking how, how many people? Like it's it's gonna be. Uh, we we've got thousands of employees, okay. and uh, they're in multiple countries. And, and our family values is something that we all live. And, and, and it's really uh, when I came on and Marty Lott himself told me about the family values and what it meant is, you know, be a good person, be nice, uh, do the right thing, passionately serve your customer, invest into each other, things like that, right? Kindergarten values, you know, things that you were yeah. taught as a child. Simple stuff. They live yeah. from the top down. I mean, completely live. There is nobody in our company that doesn't believe in and truly work in those values. And that meant a lot to me. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like everybody asks, you know, you know, what's your favorite value? And we ask each other in the company. And for me, it's invest into each other. And, and it really means a lot because it's when I came on, I knew how to decorate this stuff. I didn't know anything about apparel. Yeah. But everybody in that company took the time to, to teach me anything I wanted to know. And, and they're just so uh, gracious with it and offers up everything. Uh, our company were, are you guys familiar with um, Fair Labor Association? Mm-hmm. So when you manufacture different countries, if you really want to be at the top of the top, you get part of the Fair Labor Association. And there's a one level called FLA Elite. And it is audit after audit after craziness. And we're one of the few uh, FLA Elite factories. Oh, that's, that's, incredible. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah and, yeah. and that stemmed into other things, which I have something for you, is uh, sustainability and eco-friendly. Is we just came up with our very first completely recycled t-shirt. Oh, wow. And this is our re the one I'm wearing now. You're wearing it right now. I am. Okay. That we, makes sense now, yeah. All right. <laughs> Kevin's walking around today, he's like, what's he talking about? Yeah, yeah. What's that stuff on 100% there? Is he 100% recyclable? Yeah. Like, you know. so, that, so obviously, sustainability, people are talking about it all the time. You hear about everything. And like, is that mm-hmm. sustainable? Is that sustainable? Even, I mean, it's like almost as your coffee is sustainable as a right. river. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's cool that this is, I feel this. You guys are on the forefront. I saw you at Long yeah. Beach. I saw this, and I'm like, this is actually a nice shirt. Oh, yeah. So it's 60% fair. cotton, um, nice. 40% polyester. All of the cotton in the product is completely recycled scraps. So there, there's nothing re-dyed or reworked in that. There's no new fabric, and all the polyester wow. is PET, so recycled bottles, you know, post-consumer. And uh, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised when I tested it that it's heat-press friendly. It doesn't have dye migration issues. Um... So it's a great shirt. Yeah, it's a really good yeah. shirt. And and it's comfortable. The, the more you wash it, the softer it gets. And yeah, it's it's in our district line. So it, you're it's, probably like on a like third, fourth wash now, right? I did, yes, I'm on three now. You did wash it after Long Beach, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're just checking. My wife hate me. <laughs> 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 yep, so. I did. It was recent, but yeah. It was, okay, uh, all right. Well, let's want to make sure it was clean. It was, so. Oh, yeah. I know you guys were wearing them out there. So We did. And actually, I enjoyed that about the trade shows this year. When a lot family came and said, we're going to wear the re at the show. So I'm like, yes, I like it. Yeah, very relaxed. So uh, talking about sustainability, and I just, I'm just impressed, like, culture-wise, like, Samar is just really, it's as big as they are, they're still, like, have that small feel of, like, they care top down. They, they really they do. They care about their team and, you know, others around them. And obviously their plants, they make sure that they're giving back in those areas and everything else. So. We do. I, I got to visit our Honduras facility and. uh Honduras was, was an area that I had personally never been. I'd been over in Asia quite a bit, never made it down to South America. And, and, it, and it's heartbreaking sometimes when you go into these, these regions and they're just, they're very, very poor. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it's hard to see. But we build, uh, you know, with our factories, we build homes and communities and, and hospitals. And uh, once a year, uh, they go down with a surgeon to fix people's hands and they do it all free. You know, wow. it, it, it's all just to make sure everybody's well taken care of. And I got to see it personally. It was so cool to see. That's impressive. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what's like really cool about it. And um, you know, I, th- I think about our relationship with Samar and how it started. 
you know, and you weren't there. You, right. You know, and uh, we literally said, hey, he transfer our house. We're having an open house. We were at a show, went and talked to like a couple of the clothing vendors and says, would you show up? Would you show up? Everybody said no, except one guy named Rich. Says, yep, Rich I'll Jacobs. show up. Rich Jacobs shows up. He's like, he's funny because he's like, well, yeah, I was brought 100 catalogs. I'm like, Rich, I told you there'd be 200 people here. He ran out in the first two hours, and oh, wow. we had over 200 some people here, and it was fantastic. But um, that's really how the relationship started. That's awesome. And it's yeah. funny, you know, as Rich passed the relationship on to me, um, who you still see Rich often, right? We do. Yep, he comes up for your party every year, and, and it's important. I don't you, think he wore that shirt, though. No, no, he probably didn't. I don't think so. He probably had on a windbreaker like he usually does. <laughs> yeah. That's usually yeah. him. You might have seen yeah. him with one, yeah, yeah, at some point. Or Miller Lite. That would have been, it well, that too. That's yeah. it. We should talk about But, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's been um, a great relationship we've had yes. and, um, you know, doing stuff with it. And, you know, I think, Kevin, we're talking about business stuff mm-hmm. and kind of like, how do does he transfer vinyl and garments? Obviously, they play well together. Very. But we got to talk about how well they play together. And I guess you know we're talking about some business questions about well, you know, how do we make it a better business and how do we make sure we're picking the right garments, stuff like that. And you know, we're just kind of like obviously want to dig into that because we feel as obviously you know we've talked about it, and maybe you can explore more about it. We're talking about garments and pricing, mm-hmm. so on it what's you know what's the proper etiquette or what do you think to do so as far as picking a shirt yeah so some of the questions that we that we've gotten uh over the years and everything that i've been here is when you are pricing out like a project um how important is it to you know maybe price like an extra garment into there Uh, if you're doing a lot of like test pressing you know and how important that is uh kind of in Maybe like your business model or just, you know, when you're setting up a project. Actually, anytime, I, and I tell all decorators this, anytime you're testing a new piece, right, that you have personally never decorated before, order extra. Maybe order a few extras depending on what process you're using mm-hmm. and dial your process in. And I, and I also tell them, I said, keep a playbook. Your playbook should have every style that you have ever pressed with what you did, right? So if it's heat transfer, it's time, temperature, pressure, and any adjustments or changes you made should be in that playbook. And you should be able to go through that book and find anything you've ever done in the past. It is worth all the time you will take to create those profiles. That's a really good idea. I've never never heard of that, but yeah, the playbook yeah. is new. That's that's a great yeah. idea to think about. And this, I mean, I always tell people, I was like, well, I just press it like the last one, and you're like, no, right? You're like, what <laughs> happened? And then they got this big press mark and stuff like that. Yeah, and you know, that's why I think we really the focus is has been trying stuff, and yeah. that's really thinking about that is like. The price and model and everything else is how do you just build that into your thing? So building so. it in. So there's a couple of things I tell people: if you're building into a job, if it's decent sized, right, it's easy to build in a, a three or four dollar t-shirt, right, to do yeah. some testing on. Because you can do a lot of testing on one t-shirt. You do the front, you can do the back, you can flip it inside out, do the front and the back, and you can do yeah, tons right of testing. Yep. Flip it inside yeah, out. flip it inside out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> still because what good, you're looking yeah. for is scorching and, and dye migration, right? Those are yeah. your two main things. So mm-hmm. you can test all around this garment to figure it out. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I always recommend to people is when you have a customer shopping in and they're going back and forth on polyester, right? And they say, well, I just want the cheapest poly I can find. It's not always the best case, right? Because polyester over time, it does have a dye migration problem, right? And if you don't buy a quality polyester, you're going to scorch it. Mm-hmm. You're going to leave the marks around it and you're going to have dye migration problems. So it's always best when you're talking with that person is to try to upsell them into something nicer, right? So, um, our ST350 is a cationic fabric, right? It's we call it positive charge, where it's not going to have dye migration problems. You can apply a normal transfer to it with normal temperature um, and not have problems. I mean, polyester, kind of that magic number is 320. If you get over 320 is when you're going to scorch. When you get um, over 320, you can have dye migration. The lower you get, like you guys do, and you're always coming down lower <laughs> try, fabric or try, lower products. Try to lower that temperature yep. down. Mm-hmm. It's like it's rest of the point is like, are we like too cold? I mean, it's like, I'm like, how cold can we get? But right. it's kind of fun what we're doing. So you talk about dye migration too. And like it says, uh, okay, well, we've seen it. We've pressed stuff. And all oh, of a yeah. <laughs> what, did I, what did I do here? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know? Your red well, shirt turns white pink. Yeah. You're yep. just like, wow. And you're like, that was like the $2 shirts. And you're like, okay. So, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, give the customer, I feel obviously upsell is very important it in is. the industry. Oh, yeah. And I think once, I am like I'm a short stop, short stop here. So Kevin mm-hmm. knows it. I'm like, yep. I'll be like, I'll go to a function. Oh, give me a free shirt. And he goes, 
What do you think? I'm like, nope, don't yeah. like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not south now. Now this, I think, I always say, I'm like, God, these people would just like, just try like a nicer shirt. You'd right. be surprised because the nicer the shirt, people are going to wear it. They are. Mm-hmm. If it's not nice, they're, I just, I mean, I'm not going to wear it. Are you going to wear it? Yeah, no, I have so. tons of, tons of like one-off shirts, you know, right. that I've had over that I've acquired and it's. So Only think a few about of them this a little bit different, right? So think about it, and you can explain this to your customer as mm-hmm. well, is the cost per impression, right? So if you spend, you know, $2 on a cheap shirt, and the person gets it, and it's got your logo on the front, and they put it on, and they wear it once, right? And they throw it because they're not going to wear it again, right? Mm-hmm. That impression costs you the cost of that shirt and, the, and the, the printing, right? Putting the logo on it. If you do a nice shirt that costs 4 bucks, and that person's like, wow, this is incredible, and they wear it every month over the year, 12 times, okay? And that's pretty minimal if it's their favorite shirt. It could be twice a month. It could be three or four times a month. Yeah. What happened to your cost per impression, right? How many yeah. times did somebody see that based on what you wore? So it's that nicer shirt. It's a better investment for that customer. Mm-hmm. And with, you know, Kevin, you probably only it's wash like once a month, so maybe it's 12 mm-hmm. times for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. It's something like that. It's, when He's I like, have I'm time. trying to do only laundry once a month. You know? <laughs> That's sustainability. You know, right? Just, right? Yeah. yeah, there's sustainability for you. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I truly believe that like, it's like a nice shirt is amazing, and I guess it's, it's the upsell. And I think that's mm-hmm. really important in this industry is to get away from – there's a place for those shirts, I yeah. just think, but quality decoration, which is what we have with the vinyls from Heat Transfer mm-hmm. it's got to go in a good garment. And it if does. your customer, like that's where I say is get samples in so the customer can just feel that. And once they do, I, I just don't think they'll ever go back to, yeah. mm-hmm. to a Laurel End shirt. Well, and the other thing with Heat Transfer today, and, and I stress this to a lot of people who decorate, is the one-offs, right? It's the easiest way and the only cost-effective way to do a one-off, and especially yeah. on multiple fabrics. Um, it, you have different products that can stretch. They have dye migration blockers. Uh, they have different effects like your glitters and your uh, electric colors. And, you know, you, you look at uh, Caesar's Easy Weed line, which is, is you know, oh. how many colors now? I, I don't even remember. It, it's crazy. Know, 70, you know, 70? I don't know. Wait, is it that many? I, I feel like it is. I think it is. <laughs> I truly and feel like, like every week we're getting new colors. And then they get like the Caesar Metals, which is like the new, that's new flashy right? stuff now. Yep. It's like the new shiny. Right. And They're it's things fantastic. that can't print. Shiny now. I mean, screen yeah. printers, can you print a metallic shirt? It's not going to look like that. It's not that. the same. And, and do you want to print a glitter? No. Those are a pain too. <clears throat> and reflective. Yeah. Now, we were talking about reflective a little bit earlier. That's one of the fastest trends out there. And you can go to screen printers and ask them, do you screen print reflective? You talk to 10 screen printers. If you get one that says, I'll screen print reflective, I'll be shocked. Because you're tr- basically trying to push glass beads through a mesh. And it's not fun. So having heat transfer vinyl is a way to do safety wear, to do anything with reflectives, and, and that's a hot, hot market. Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, like I said, it's a, it's a great market. And I think, you know, talk about how to market yourself a little bit. is like, you know, everybody, do you think you should just go out and go all-encompassing? Or, or do you kind of like maybe find a niche that you feel comfortable with? I think niches are, for a smaller company, the best way to start. So I know when my wife and I, we started our business, it was a niche around baseball and dance, right? So my okay. son played baseball, my, my girls danced, and that's where the business naturally came from. So we started there, we started growing, got an entire little league, and we're sitting there going, oh my gosh, what do we do now, right? <laughs> and it was not, it was a lot of kids, and we, we went for it, we did it. And from there, next thing you know, we got the water polo team at the high school coming to us with these funky bags, and, and they're like, nobody will do these. And I look at them like, oh. I don't even know what the heck we did. I don't even know what this is. And, and I said, I can, I can probably embroider this. You know, I'm just going to give it a shot. And I had the right clamp to do it. Um, but it's also just, you know, throwing yourself out there and testing stuff. You know, I always tell people, I said, don't ever say no to a job until you've talked to your supplier. Because your suppliers are going to have answers, right? If you, yeah. if you come to them and say, I've got this weird job. I don't know what to do. And you provide them with data. This is the fabric. This is what it's made of. They're going to be able to provide you an answer. Well, hopefully, we also tell like says I know Kevin. We got people sending stuff in. We'll tell them, hey, send it into us. We'll test it, send it yeah. back to them, and, and see if it works. And some, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. Right. Or we know the process yet, but we definitely want to be you know part of the exploratory process mm-hmm. and, and help them like that. And I think the niche is really kind of cool. It's twenty twenty. Yeah. You know, new decade and everything. Um, where do you see like the garment industry going? 
So the garment industry today, it, and this is from a lot of research and because I do a lot of testing with our, our global sourcing and our merchandising team who work really hard to bring new fabrics that are sustainable, eco-friendly. Um, I think that's where the market is going today is you're going to see more and more companies bringing in sustainable products that are made of recycled materials. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not easy to do, I'll be honest with you. It, it, it is difficult. Um, you're going to see some more USA-made products popping in. Um, and, I, and I really think you're gonna, you, in 2020, you're going to see stuff going backward a little bit. Yeah, back, your yeah. heavy duty shirts. You remember the big six point one seven ounce? Like you put it yeah. on, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's starting to come back. People are asking for that stuff what? again. No kidding. And yeah. uh, I, I was sitting with our with our team, and they're showing it to me. I'm just like, all right. I guess it'd be warmer. Yeah, you'd be warmer. Yeah, and, and maybe popular. Just, I don't know from a running sample. I don't, oh, I'm gosh, not into that. No. I don't think I'm gonna do that. No, so, and, and so I have with, a chafe issue. So right, and you run, <laughs> and you run, and run, and run. That's that's <laughs> impressive. Because uh, I think the last time we were together, not the show before that, you guys had just finished your fourth marathon in a row, going on five. Oh, we did uh, three marathons in five weeks. <sighs> so when we left, when I saw you in Dallas, right, we flew back and did our last third, third oh marathon in gosh. five weeks. So it would take me five weeks to walk one marathon. Yeah, it's not too bad. So you could do it. I'm sitting <laughs> on my recliner on Sunday mornings and I look on. Social media and everything, Kirk. Oh, I just ran, ran like twenty five miles or something. Gosh, no, no, no problem at all. I don't know. That's couldn't a, that's do it. <laughs> nope. Uh, I but, just like running on the beach, you know. Oh, right, but you know, mm -hmm. running on the beach and stuff. It's like you know, so running. Yeah, you do a lot of running. You're gonna see, um, you know, your polyesters now, right? In your tribal, so your polyesters are gonna be super soft. Um, you're also gonna see them come out of uh, recycled products as well. You're gonna see a lot of recycled poly hit the marketplace. Um, I would say that the, the stuff that's out on the market today is very sensitive. It is a little more difficult to heat apply, screen print, things like that. It's just, it is difficult. Um, so it is, if you do run into recycled polyester, you want to recommend a super low temperature application. So low temp on the, on the recycled Yeah, stuff. for sure. It, that's going to help. Now, this one, this that one I'm good. Selling. That that one, that's no problem. The RETI, we I've applied that at 300, yeah. 320, and we haven't had any no, issues. No so. problems. Retain. So basically in the heat transfer industry, we're going to need to more emphasize more on the low temperature right okay yep. and that's because wow. of the technical fabrics right so you're going to see a lot of um, uh, spandex coming out so we just launched our uh, dt 7500 to district product that has five percent spandex and the rest cotton it's a beautiful shirt it is you talk about soft and comfortable and the way it drapes i mean incredible even on a big guy right I and that's on, coming that's out already just, already just launched yep okay but that five percent spandex is creating just enough stretch that you have to have a product that will accept that, right? Oh, so, yeah. um, uh, Caesar, the easy weight stretch, stretch, right? Great yep. product, got a lot they of stretch to it. A lot it. of colors too. So yeah, it's again, good. a lot of colors. Yeah, you know that's a great product to use. But being mindful of the spandex and the other stretchable products that are coming to market is something that, that the decorators got to pay attention to, or they're going to end up having an upset customer on the other side. So definitely mm -hmm. a lot more testing. Like we go back to the mm -hmm. thing, yeah. the garments the and like yeah. yep. bring a couple in. Yep. Ruin it. Playbook. Just, Playbook, but ruin it, and then mm -hmm. see what happens, and yep. get to where you want it to be. At. And obviously, customer satisfaction is number one. In that. That's right. So we were testing today. Yeah. Right. So it, and and this is a fun one. We were testing our new clear tote. Yes. Okay. So what's happening in 2020, 2021 is your stadiums and your arenas are going to require a clear tote, right? So we launched yeah. our clear tote and our clear backpack, uh, BG430 and the BG230. Um, we we were struggling trying to find an option for heat transfer. And uh, testing with your folks today, we found one I think is pretty that promising. It looked pretty sweet, right? It did look pretty so sweet. So again, and, uh, doing a I little mean, more testing, and you say go, you get that out on the web. I mean, that's a lot of bags we're looking at selling, and they need yeah. some options to decorate it. Well, the thing is, like I, I know I had to buy a clear tote last year, and I can guarantee I don't know where it's at right now, so I have to buy another mm -hmm. clear tote. So right. clearly, it's 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 something that I think it's going to be constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. And we can decorate on it. I was I was happy with it. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Well, that decorate. that low temp um, Thermoflex, the uh, Turbo. Turbo. Yeah. That applied really good. Yeah, that was that's a nice product. Yeah. So I would say that um, anybody who's looking to getting in those, it would be worth investing um, into a few bags. Do some testing yourself to make sure it's something that you like and you and you're comfortable selling to your customer. But today, when I put that on, and I was scratching at it with your people. It, it's not coming off. So that, that's a good positive sign. That's nice. Yep. And again, like new that. revenue stream, right? And pe for people who have that niche of the schools and, and uh, 
so you figure in an arena or stadium that goes all the way down to high schools. Okay, so, so, if you're doing so mass, school, so you're talking not just professional events, you're talking mass. Right. Like they're all going to Everybody goes Friday Night Lights, all that stuff, they're saying it's clear. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, that's, yeah, so definitely industry going on that way. Not, I kind of like it, though. It's like, no, you don't have to worry about what's in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's simple, it's easy, and it speeds mm-hmm. up the process because now they're worse than, uh, you know, going to like a football, football game and somebody has got a purse and you're like, yeah. Seriously? <laughs> and, and, and honestly, they're trendy today. Yeah. My youngest daughter, she, we were at Target, and this was like two years ago, and she went and needed a backpack for a trip. She goes and gets this clear backpack, and I'm like, really? You want everybody to see what you got? Oh, Dad, this is so fashionable. And she puts it on her shoulder and walks up to pay for it. I sat back and went, okay. Clear totes it is. So that's, mm-hmm. that's trending. Yeah, it's trending. It's trending. Yeah. yeah, I just think of not having to wait in line for, you know, I mean, that line's... For now, as long as they don't require it, I mean, you're probably looking at a 10-minute line versus maybe a one-hour right. line there. because they can pick it up and do this. And yep. They can do it, scan it, and everything else. Yep. So, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of cool stuff. Anything else 2020? I mean, what we should yes. be looking for? Or? Oh, so, uh, 2020, some other things that are, are, are recent for us, so our ST420, our sport tech line, we came out with our, ver- our first U- UPF 50 shirt that has no treatments. It's actually the mechanical part of the shirt will provide you with a UPF 50 protection mm-hmm. against the sun. Wow. So it comes in a long sleeve, comes in a short sleeve. It's 100% poly. Um, actually prints really well. Um, I was I was happy when I got it and I got to test it. And it tested good. Didn't have a lot of dye migration problems and no scorching. So that's another thing you're going to see it's, is it's UPF. It's good to know. Yeah, no scorching. Kevin, you're pasty away. You probably need one of those yeah. shirts. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, the last it's thing that I brought. I'm a northerner. <laughs> yeah, from the the we're like minus 20 just like I mean, you're just it's yeah rash guards surf being in the water oh, yeah. you know being on a boat whatever it happens to be this is our new sport tech rash guard prints really really well got a ton of stretch yeah. stretch we have nice it. yep so that's something else that again you'd, you'd <clears throat> want to have something that will have some dye migration blocking capabilities and uh, again that product worked fantastic yeah, that looks great. Uh, again, low temp, uh, white looks white. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's key on the products there. So. Mm-hmm. And, and again, when you're talking to your customer too and you're talking about dye migration, is always tell them, okay, apply it, put it away, and look at it tomorrow. Yep. Because dye migration could take some time to come through, and I've seen it take as much as three days yes. to actually show up. Yeah, I had a pair of pants all of a sudden. They were like, oh, it looks great. And then three days later, I'm on the plane, and I'm like, it's turning gray. It's <laughs> happening. Yep. Uh, so. you know, talk about pants. Uh, joggers. Joggers are huge, and they're not going anywhere. We've launched, I think, two or three new joggers. We've got um, the leggings, the seven eights leggings. We have, I think, three versions of that now between our Ogio and our Sport Tech line. Um, and it's a great product for a promotional. You know, it's surprising how many people huh. want that athleisure crossover kind of product yeah. mm-hmm. and and i'll be honest it's one thing i like about you guys is i come in here everybody's got their uh, heat transfer warehouse t-shirt on oh i'd like that because you know do i like wearing a polo every day no nah, not really i prefer a t-shirt too um yeah we're pretty i mean pretty relaxed about how oh, like, yeah. hey just pick a good garment and yeah uh, yep. we just open it up and like here you go let's yeah let's, let's pick something out fun so i mean it's kind of cool with the uh, i love this rash card yeah, those I love the vibrance. Great. I like the Yeah, I mean, it like... just seems so bright, and it's, yeah, my mm-hmm. kids wear them all the time for swimming and stuff like that. What so. do you think of uh, tri blends? Love tri blends. So, tri blends are changing sure as well. Right here. Right? Okay, <laughs> tri blends are changing. Um, they're going to become more <clears throat> cotton rich, right? right? So, there's going to be a little more cotton in it. And uh, what that's going to provide is a more stable printing surface. Okay. And, you know, so when you, if you go from having a heavy polyester to a heavy cotton content, you're still going to have generally the same feel. But you're going to have a lot less problems printing it because you're not dyeing the polyester, you're dyeing the cotton. So when's that change going to happen? That's already starting. It's already starting. Yeah, we're starting so to see that shift. You, does it kind of just work through inventory? Mm-hmm. You're going to see that shift? Uh, new products. New products. New styles. Okay. Yeah, we'll come out with new styles because there's like, you know, the uh, our district, our, our DM130 is just su- super popular and it's heavy poly content. The poly's dyed, but people figured out how to work with it and work with our crew over at um, the digital and decoration side. We help them get through it. Okay. Wow, <laughs> so like, how do you even keep up with it? Obviously, I need to. Yeah. I need to uh, subscribe. Obviously, get on the email list. I, I have uh, multiple hard drives. I keep putting in and taking out. I feel yeah. the same way sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean the industry is. Uh, um, it's always changing. Yeah, it seems yeah, like it's and, just impressive. Like it's, yeah. you know, I, I admire about Sam is like them, like kind of 
keeping up with the trends, but setting the trends too of what's going to happen mm-hmm. out there. And Our crew is uh, in merchandising is incredible. I mean, they go out and they research and research and research and look what's going on in fashion. And we have one person in the in house, Vicky, that she tracks trends of fashion. Um, and they, they, they go out and they find these things and, and we create these new great styles and our global sourcing team that help create fabric, right? They are constantly creating new fabric and looking at new fabric and trying to get things that are um, soft, comfortable, uh, workable with decorating as well. Because that's the one thing at Sandbar is we sell product to be decorated. So we're trying to come out with product. Everything coming out of there is decorated. That's the goal. Yeah, so everything, everything out of there is going somewhere to be decorated. Somewhere mm-hmm. to be decorated, so... I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's cool what's coming out there and it's always fun. And obviously, like I said, you know, I always like to get samples and stuff just to, just to feel. And once you own, everybody's mm-hmm. different. So yeah. that's key is bringing it with the customer and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, and, and I do recommend showrooms. I mean, if people, even if they have a yeah. small, small place, at least have a rack of your most popular stuff, right? If you're, if it's winter time, you should have fleece and you should have, um, long sleeves and some headwear and some beanies out and you know, maybe some jackets to show did and that should switch. Out? I okay. did, but it was under puffy. Under mm-hmm. puffy. Under puffy. <laughs> under puffy. Okay. So fleece was definitely in the travel it bag was when definitely came there. Out. No, so, it was on. It was on. Yes. Okay. And puffy. And puffy. <laughs> <laughs> so um traveling out here. You got bags too. Oh, we got a lot of bags. <laughs> Uh, we, we manufacture so many bags that it, every time I go in for a product review, right? So I, I, I am lucky and honored to be able to go in and look at our stuff before it actually goes into production and work with our merchandising um, to make sure it's decorator friendly. Yep. And, and they're doing really good with it now. But my gosh, we have backpacks and totes and you know the clear bags and luggage and golf bags and uh, little tech bags. And it just, it is endless and, and it blows me away. The sling bags are super popular and, and we're, I don't know how they come up with some new styles. Cause I'm seriously going, <laughs> I don't know what else you could do. I, we were top, we're tapped out. Now, by the time the next launch comes around, they got something else really cool. <laughs> I, that love, I would never be able to envision. I love bags and I have to like control myself. Not I agree. Like, not to like buy another one, like almost every week. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what do you need that bag for? Uh, maybe it was just because there's something I own that I maybe it's the there. bag I go back and forth home to, right. you know, and then I have to have the travel bag and this. And I try to justify all of it. It doesn't work out. No. Yeah, not so, always. Yeah. Never working out. But <laughs> wife know, calls me out quickly and she's oh, like, yeah. that, you're not storing that stuff here. <laughs> but you need it. Yeah. So here, here's a good thing. And this is what, something I'm proud of because I've, I've been with Sam now for just over three years. And I, I, the day I came on, they gave me a bag, right? And I got my line of Ogeo bags and, you know, 190 days in hotels for three years. You can imagine how many trips that was. It's a few bags. Yeah. I am still using the same bags. Impressive. Wow. Still. Wow. And they're just getting to the point where I'm like, mm, maybe I'm going to replace that one. But it's only because I want the next one that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like, I have one I love and it's like, it's been travel perfect for me. And I try other bags. I keep on going back to that same one because like it just fits like my laptops, everything just perfectly. So. Right. Mm-hmm. But again, you can decorate it too. And right. And that's another cool part. It was like, don't just have two shirts. Oh gosh, no! You you can don't do, limit you can yourself. Do bags. You yes. can do everything mm-hmm. else. So anything wait. I tell people, it's like if you're going to do heat transfer, heat transfer is the most versatile decorating technique. I mean, you can literally heat press it. You can get it under a press, into a hat press, whatever machines you buy. Buy the smaller platens to go with, so you can get into other things. It's really limitless, and you can do every part of a shirt with a heat press, which is a cool thing. On a screen print press, can you? Yes. Do you want to? Not always. But, you know, if you place something on the back yoke or you want to do a wrap around one side or you just want some really weird placement up up and down, yeah. so easy to do on a heat press. That's why I love the like says our, the, the industry of heat transfer is very versatile. Mm-hmm. It uh, allows you to get in a lot of areas. So mm-hmm. Kevin, you're gonna need some bags coming up. You got your trip coming up. Yeah, yeah. So I know uh, a guy. I need a couple. Yeah, yeah. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you might, you might, you might know a few things guy. about a couple bags, stuff like that. <laughs> so um, you know, kind of wrapping up here. I guess um, super excited to be out for our first show kick off. Oh, appreciate mm-hmm. it. Super excited. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin, you've been sitting over here like silent all day. Or no, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just taking this all in, man. Taking it all yeah. in. So like, I've, I've, I've personally found out a lot more uh, about Sandmar. It's more than just a garment company. It, it truly is. Just... Um, so we just recently launched this website. It's called a Canvas for Good. 
And it, it was um, during one of our sales meetings, uh, all, all of our territory managers got up and were telling stories about where their clients were using these t-shirts. Cry fest. Mm-hmm. I mean, me, my boss, who, who we're, we're both the biggest guys in this room and we're the biggest babies blubbering in this room because they're telling these stories. You and cry. Oh, always. It's crazy. <laughs> I have three girls that I sing. Think, I mean, I, I cry your constantly. Wife, I oh, yeah. your wife did say when we met her that you could be a little bit of a crier. Oh, yeah, I do. I am I am the emotional one in the family. And mm-hmm. uh, so they're telling these stories. And, and the big thing about it is is your customers are making shirts for people that there's a story behind, right? So it, it can truly be uh, what we have deemed a canvas for good, you know, because it could be something that's for a sports team. Uh, it could be something for a charity. It could be something for a memorial service. But think about what those mean. You know, with the memorial service, obviously, we know what that one's for. You think about that little kid who's getting his first sports shirt. That's big. Oh, mm-hmm. that's big. never gonna forget it. I bet you can't yeah. wait till you get that first sports shirt. Oh yeah, the, yep. Your kid, it's gonna be like you're gonna blink, and it's gonna be a couple of years ago. Boom. That's, that's gonna. So happen. I still have all of my son's baseball jerseys. Impressive. All of them, and I've got my mm-hmm. son or my daughter's uh, three softball. She tried it for a few years, decided she would like to sing and dance, and she's really good at it. So I'm like, okay, that's probably a good thing that's to stay right. there. Follow your passion, right? Yeah, but it is so cool. To have those, you know, they're, they're mementos and, and we have mm-hmm. some, uh, of our own that mean a lot to us that I'll never get rid of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know. Yeah. My parents growing up, my mom saved everything. She saved my first minor that I got <laughs> a little ticket in a scrapbook and everything, but, <laughs> That's I mean, like, awesome. but, uh, garments, everything, you know, I have clothes that, uh, I have had since I was a baby, you know, and giving it to my daughter now. And just seeing that, it's like, wow, yeah. 33 years later. I think you still have some of your garments you still fit in from. Like, I do, like, yeah. Grade school. yeah. I think you were like <laughs> saying, I can fit into the shirt. 94 <laughs> basketball camp. Puts it on the warehouse and yeah. it's like, hey, look at me. It still fits. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so um, we're looking forward to show number two. We got uh, Luke Eisen coming from Special Materials coming out. Nice. And yeah. we're really excited about having him out. And uh, mm-hmm. he'll sound all weird because he's Australian. So it's a bit of a talk to him. So, but um, really thank you for coming out, Jason. Appreciate you guys. And, Thanks uh, for having ho- me. Hopefully soon we'll see you on the trade show uh, world. And uh, I know as a road warrior, we'll run into each other at some point. So. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Compare right. notes again then. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Over beer. Over beer. Yes. Mm-hmm. So there you go, folks. Uh, Beyond the rolls, and we'll we'll see you next time. Episode two. Yep. See you guys. Take care. <laughs>